at this again. Number 83. Oh, God, so hopefully again, we can get three in one go. Maybe. Oh, you see, it's an hour if you watch all four. Just don't go on tangents, Matt. Just don't go on tangents. Right. No tangentials. Oh, don't. oh, I'll just skip the video like that. So what have we got going on? Oh, we're doing the watch, yeah? Right, watch out, welcome back. Okay, let's get cracking <laughs> on the second half of the mud guard. That's the back bit, the bit that goes down behind the wheel, and I'm gonna use that lip. So, you can see how nice this is. All right. This has been English wheeled, and this is lovely. Lovely rollover. On the rear. But you can see how shiny That came as part of this. It might have been formed, but with the roll on it like that. I oh my God. Know. Like it might have been stamped, but I doubt it. Uh, to just finish it off, that's quite a nice rear end. It could be actually, but that is a really nice roll on there. Who knows? And I like that. That will stay with it. But I've got to section it like I did the front one. What do you mean like the front one? Why did you chop it in half? Cut a V in it, weld it all the way down so it's a little bit more of the same. And then I can put that on the back end. The back end, I want it to come quite low to protect the new radiator and the belly pan that I put in place and all that. So I can always cut it up if it's too long. So I'm going to make the rear section this bit as long as I can. And then I can trim up the front half as much as I need to. Right, it's enough chats, get stuck in. Welcome back. Why? Wow, wow, wow. Let's see if the trend is following actually. How many views has this got? 8.2. Yeah. Yeah, 8.2. Moving on. Get that grind back there. Right, we're doing the same. Trick as always, or the, the standard trick, or not always, the same, the, the, the standard trick now. The welding on side, inside of that, do you see that is hideous? Oh, you've got an entire mudguard worth there. If you just push it up a bit. Thing is, it's like, he has a mudguard here. What you, what you, you know, the wheel turns this way, right? And it flicks up radially, like, oh, now it, now it, now it's stopped. It's like, it flick, we don't care if it flicks that way. All we care about is a line just say from there down, which means that the mudguard, really anything forward of here is just for the fun of it. Oh, glad you measured that properly. Hang about, hang about, I've just seen something wrong straight away. That hole will be in the middle. Why isn't this line on the hole? I would trust that hole over anything else. I'd measure it, but it looks like it's about right. Like, there is the apex. <laughs> Why doesn't that line go down the hole? But it, ah, 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 even that one. You see, how can you be this daft? So, he, as he moves up... Oh, you bastard. It's because we've got a 10,000 times speed. The hole! The tape goes over the middle of the hole. That's the centre. Which would, which would mark up with that hole down there. Oh, offset. Offset. You can see the holes. Look, what's going on? What is going on? You've, you've cut through holes. You've sectioned holes. That one and that one. That's one edge of his V. Are you sure about this? <laughs> I 
I'd have to check, but I would imagine those holes are in the middle. They could not be. But I imagine they are. Why, why wouldn't them holes be in the middle? This is so bad, isn't it? Oh, that disc has disappeared again. Is this just last five seconds? Yes, I know this should be MIG welded. TIG welded, sorry, but I don't have a TIG machine. Well, one you do, <laughs> it does. Number two is, no, you can do it with this. Stack each tag half on top. Whoa, 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 there we are, sorry. Stack each tag half on top of the last makes a seam weld. All right, but you're not doing that. And one that won't blow through the sheet metal. And then you start going... Burr, burr. more like bullet holes than drill holes. Yeah, that's because it's it's wobbled and it's chewed it out. Or oh, people are retards. We're too big to be plug welded. Eh, it, you, you'd put a patch in, but you could. You can. Oh, that's flo Oh, God. It didn't, it didn't make a, a coin to fit in it. Right, you just put something behind it. For fuck's sake. Oh, you did this time. But make sure it's level. No, it fell. I saw it. Oh. <laughs> I saw it fall. Look, you see it there, it's tipped. You briefly see it now as well in the end of the tip. Then just two regular spiral plug welds on the smallest holes. Spirals? Oh, yeah, just go for it. We've seen his plug welds. They're, oh yeah, these are they're no different. Apart from stainless. Stop. Like a scotch bright. There we go. Plug weld extravaganza. Plug welds seem to be his best. <laughs> right, here we go. Another little fun session on the fab. Look at that. Look at that end. How that came out. Shit. I love that. It's not in the middle. It's not in the middle. It's not in the middle. It is a happy accident, really, because obviously it was a curve and channeling a section out the middle and bring it to. Look at the sh look at the shape of it. Look at it. it's not the same profile. To kind of short circuits that curve into a point. I absolutely love that. Maybe this was a really bad fender, <laughs> and uh, maybe this really was a bad mudguard. And I've got another idea. This. Because then, then, oh, then, yeah, maybe it is because they don't meet up. Has possibly made me think twice about. Just look, they're literally, this is a different angle to this. No matter how much he swings it around, even as it goes around the corner, it's there. This is round here somewhere. Out the direction I was going. Let me just show you what I mean. Get on the bike in. Maybe that was just someone. So, handmade. there. Now, as I said, don't know where this is going to go. Yeah, I could use that as the front. I love that V in it. Absolutely love that. It's, look at it. You can see it. It just looks right. Um, it doesn't look right. Kind of go. Draw, draw around it for me. Lay, lay, go out. Roll it, lay it flat and draw around it. And then cut that out and fold it in half. Goes with the whole quirky nature of the bike. And that, the previous one I did, that looks a little bit more normal. So that'd be great at the rear. It will definitely work. Why did you chop it into it again? There. So I've now got all of the material I need. I can cut from this middle end, you see. I can just chop any of that back to make it the length it needs to be. But what? 
All right, so yeah, if you chop it in half, then you can shrink them, but it just seems stupid. So it just looks right into that later on. I just needed to make the basic V in it. It has narrowed in a little bit with the welding. The heat of welding that in has drawn that in. It's drawn the curve round slow. Oh, I said this. I said that if you pull it in, it's going to tuck in. Slightly it's more, so I've got to bend that out a little bit. All for later on, it's all just details, not a big issue. As you can see, I love this kind of curved down Hayabusa style. I said to a load of you, con for context, just so it's fresh in your mind. Uh, and put a H at the front. That's that's how you say it in Yorkshire, Hayabusa. Aya. All oh, right, now I might see what it means. Yeah, yeah, no, it's got a straight edge though. Uh, yeah, it's got that little attacky straight edge. Yes, yes, you see, I ain't got one on it. Uh, yes, it's got that attacky straight edge. There we go. Look, look, I get what it means now. Yeah, it's got that. But you see, the nose is nearly the nose is nearly well above the front axle. It's crazy, actually, if you think about it. That's why I look really the bio boosters look really strange. I know this is a newer one. Eye boosters look really strange when they've got no fairings on. They're just like a normal bloody Suzuki just with a bigger tank <gasps> I think it looked really odd but that's not what the original one looked like the original one looked like this so I don't I'm, I'm sure he means he must mean the newer unless he's 2022 he can't do when did they bring out the new one the gen 3 the Gen 3 Hayabusa... Well, I'll just go to Wikipedia. It'll tell us what it, it'll tell us when the Gen 3 came out. When did the Gen 3 come out? Uh, other developments. Why has Wikipedia lost the thing at the side? I don't like this full-page malarkey. It looks horrible. Other developments. Have I missed it? Have I missed it? First generation... It's really hard to see like this. I don't like this at all. Oh, maybe that's why. That's me. <laughs> it's me. It's all right. I'm tarded. So it says first generation. Then it doesn't say second or third. Oh. Other developments. Uh, so I think a new one came out. I don't know when the new one came out. Oh, here we are. It's all right. It's all right. Special. I'm special. Oh, well, look. The second generation was to 2020. So he's talking about the second generation. And that's what the second generation looked like. Oh, look at that. Almost looks like Dell's bike. Maybe, maybe he's trying to copy this with these shitty fucking wit bits and this hump. And looks like it's got tanks on top of tanks on top of tanks. Well, I don't like this at all. But I do like the original. Third generation, yeah, 2022, so it's brand new. So I'm not sure what he means, because he can't have seen the future. Maybe, maybe he can. I was looking at the picture, that's it. That sort of angle there. I may have to section this a little bit and curve it more. because. But everything on this bike is really stubby. It's a really stubby round crayon Volkswagen Beetle lumpy bumpy stubby 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 and then you've got this big sharp thing. It's a flatter curve Tom. than the wheel. This is probably a 19 inch mudguard whereas that's a 17 inch wheel so you've got more of a curved wheel and it's flatter which is what's given this. If I put it on in the normal way look you've got this out the front. That's not the normal way. That's not the normal way. So I can deal with that if I need to I can just you bring it out from the center both bits you chop it bit. two or three pie slices out of that bring it all in weld it in and then oh well you could shrink it and shit oh. off and it'll look great so that's not an issue has anyone got a metal mud guard if you've got a metal mud guard you don't know what the fuck you're ever going to use it for you're never going to use it please send me it in someone sent me in a tank we're going to get on right on that because i'm literally just as because i I've done very, very little sheet metal work, right? Nothing extravagant. And we're going to have a go at doing something extravagant. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a tank and I'm going to reshape it, right, in various methods from what I've seen and learned and whatever. I said learn what I've seen and I think I've got a handle on what's going on. So we're going to have a good laugh at me tearing into that. It's literally like a little side project, little side project of just the tank. And what I'm going to try and do 
He's remodeled the tank just to, like he's trying to do. Make it look curved. Make, do this, do this, do this. Do all this shit. We might do some tank stuff. Well, no, we're going to do some tank stuff to the side, maybe a bit to the top. And then, if all goes well, it should we'll see. If all goes well, I'm going to have a go at doing his chicken wire method, but make a plug, do what he should do, make a plug, make a mould, make a part that goes onto it. And then some frilly bits. Just just to give people, like what he's trying to do, give people ideas, go through it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but whether it becomes... But if anyone's got a mud guard, we can do a similar little project. Oh, I'll tell you what you can do. You can, yeah, yeah, like I say, if you've got a mud guard, you fucking don't. You sat in the back of your shed or whatever, or sung up in the rafters. You don't know what the fuck you want to do with it. You're never going to do anything with it, kind of thing. Yeah, here's a shout. The front, I do want it low. That's going to be low down the front like that, purely because it's got that Hayabusa kind of Honda Blackbird look. That's what I'm trying to achieve. And bring this whole front looking lower. So the whole front looks low and butch and mean and aggressive, which is what Street Fighter should be about. Uh, well, they certainly used to be anyway. So there we go. That's it. Well, what do you mean? All I've got to do from here is weld the two together somehow. But I'm going to think whether or not that remains the front one, or whether I carry on and go back to that one for the front instead. Not so sure. But got lots of options. Could do all that. I'll... You've got two options. To think things through, and then I get the right solution first. It's more than one. It's a lot. Rather than cut it up and do it all over again, because I haven't got another one of these. Um, so there we are. Now that leaves it for. Today, this is at the time of recording this right now. It is Saturday. This is half past 12 on Saturday. I've been here since nine o'clock this morning. So we're going to for a four or so hour session and I'm going to go back to the office now and edit and upload this all in one go. So by the time you're watching this at the very earliest, it's about 5 p.m. I imagine. So it's a late one for Saturday, but with day shifts this week, with, with day job this week, I was flat out, so I didn't have time to get in the garage at all until today. So there we are. This is a slightly late one, but it's online. So tomorrow, Sunday, We'll be doing the paintwork on Penny's bike. We're going to, have to see Mackie Bass. It's a fantastic weekend away. So thank you ever so much for all of your support with that. The video for it, for the artwork that Mackie's going to do, will be up on Wednesday next week. And of course, prize draw tomorrow is something a little bit special and interesting for you. So that just leaves one more thing, one more point that I want to make before I finish today. And that is my good friend, Luke Smith. I want to say get well soon to my buddy, Luke. Luke Smith watches all these videos and he has been absolutely floored by a serious illness. He's in the hospital at the moment, uh, but we are reliably informed he's on the mend. He's better half sent us a little message and said, could you say hi to him? So honestly, Luke, get well soon, my friend. Thank you so much. Honestly, Luke, my friend, get well soon. It's such a weird... So Penny sure. says the same as well. She can't be here. She doesn't come into the garage with fabrication videos. It's a dangerous environment, so she only comes in for other things. But she sends her love as well. So we send both of our love to you, my friend. Get this is past the point where he said in another video, oh, because of the trolls and abuse and stuff, she's not doing videos. We well, just changed his mind. Get well soon. It's not nice being unwell, and you, you are a big guy. I can't believe that anything has floored you. I really can't. So there we go. I want to see that rap. Oh, because... I don't know if he means tall, fat, whatever, but you're a big guy or built like a brick shit house. Because viruses care about that. <laughs> the number of cells you've got matters. Right, continue. I looked at it all on your Facebook page. I want to see that build going on. Absolutely love it. You took a really nice bike and turned it into a rat. That is how it should be. Oh, you trash. Be fantastic, yeah. great. And again, thank you, my friend, for all of your support watching. Get well soon. We're both thinking of you and keep in touch. All right, there we go. So that's all, everybody. Thanks ever so much for all of your kind support. Really appreciate it. It's almost like he's trying to drill up, drum up sympathy. Take it easy. Ride safe. It's like people have been giving him shit at this time, saying you're lying to what you keep on deleting people's comments. And then... All the trolls are making me be say nasty things. So, 84 and tool cut, toolkit three days to go. So for those of you who don't know, he got in bed with Sealy and they put together a toolkit with Imperial and Metric adjustable spanners. Um, and it was the essentials, apart from it had a hacksaw, a Stanley knife and all this other shit. But it didn't have any sockets that would fit spark plugs um, or a torque wrench or anything, like that, even though they do sell them. So there's a load of junk in there and not much that was worth bothering with. There was a little shitty torch that was completely fucking useless. And I did a video where I smashed it up. <laughs> but, but, um, yes, that's what he's talking about, his toolbox giveaway. And I bought one. And it was a complete waste of money.
corrective curvature. I don't know why he's always jacking the bike up. He's got a safety bar where you stick it underneath it, so even if the hydraulics fail, it'll just sit there. That just stays there. It just fucking stays there. Hi, what's your welcome back? Okay, the next episode, the next instalment on this Hold on. Life Guard fabric. I, I can't help myself. Fabrication myself. involves correcting the ellipse. At the moment, as you can see, it's too straight. This is probably from a 19 inch mud guard, I imagine looking at the origins of it, and that's a 17 inch wheel, so it's going to have too straight a curve, and that's got to be corrected for it to look right. It's not wrong. Well, no, it's just that back in the day they didn't have mud guards that literally tried to hug it. Well, if I get the shorter piece, I didn't pop it on there. I know one does that. It's sat on doesn't the tire. Doesn't look terribly out, but, but it's enough to be noticed, and I don't like that. It's got to be right. If you, if you press the back down to follow the tire for a bit, for say that much, front of it's kicking up half an inch. Well, lift the back up half an inch. Already too much, at least to follow down, at least to follow it, you know? So, the best, if it's... <laughs> best way to do it, like all Geometry! Geometry is hard! Things. Easy to show in this bit, is to cut little slices in it along its edge, nice. both sides. Put creases in. and then curve it around a little bit more and tack weld those slides up so that effectively you bring the curve in obviously you couldn't just bend it because the sides would just flap out with it's being this is a curve so it's got to be done a little bit but you've got to... don't get me wrong you've got the you've got the rolled over edges which would be a cunt so you just cut them off or you unfold well, unfold them i don't know what you do as a actually if there are any panel beating guys if there are any panel beating guys out there who watch who are watching this video now, just say if you wanted to modify this and you wanted to roll this back out uh, to, to 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 you know to shrink it to make it a smaller radius, would you? You probably would, wouldn't you? Because you'd probably just roll them back out, right? You just fucking try and unfold them and then shrink it to bring it back in again, or would you just not bother and get a fucking fresh piece of steel and start again? I, I think you could, you know, you could roll them out and then, fuck, well, he's fucking welded everything in place. But you it'd just say if it was done properly, you roll them out, cut them off. What would you do? Cheat really and butcher it. Because I think he's going to put sides on it. So if you're going to put sides on it, you're going to weld a panel to it anyway. So you might as well just cut them off. A little slot. Because the thing is, he's got it. it. Then just weld them up and, and planish them over at the end. The whole thing's going to get body work, so it doesn't matter if it's got welds on it. Now. There's another little trick to it, something else you have to be careful of, and I try and impart a little bit if I can, if you're going to do any of this fabrication yourself. What's really important when doing this is if you're going to cut these little slits in the side to then close up, they have to be exactly the same place side to side. Because if you cut one slit out of kill it with the other on the other side, when you shut that curve up, it's going to twist. It will actually follow the curve. One will cut in there, the other. So let's see if you get the square out. down there. Even just getting the ball yeah. part. So it will curve that way and it will just look wrong. The whole thing when you're finished will end up twisted. So it's pretty it important to get where the cuts are in relation to the center line absolutely 90 degrees across it. So that sort of thing also matters. Fabrication is not difficult, it's just a little bit. Oh, it is, though. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you make it more difficult. Thinking and trial and error, and you'll get it. And I hope that a few of you out there thinking about or getting into a little bit of fabrication yourself because it's enormous fun very creative and it sets your bike apart from all the others out there right anyway it is not wrong it is fun right it gets you off your ass off the playstation that kind of shite off gambling there was a guy who contacted me who was saying that um watching not me but watching other videos that i suggest like you know the uh, key fenner stuff like that has made him get back into the garage, right? And now he's got some machines. He's got a lathe. He's got a milling machine. He's even trying to set himself up a little plasma cam, which is fucking cool. And he was saying that it was because he started watching videos um, and AV and stuff like that, and it, it gave him the bug. And it stopped him gambling, online gambling, which he was, he was starting... He was starting to go off a cliff. He was saying, you know, 
it got to the point where I was I'm just putting a bit on, having a bit of fun, you know, set a limit of 200 quid or something he said. And then he was saying that basically it got to the point where he was putting nearly a thousand pound a month on these online gambling things. And he said, I've just found something else to sink my teeth into. And he goes, the thing is, when you gamble, most of the time you lose. Some of the time you win, but you never lose. You never win what you put in, obviously. But he's saying, you know, getting that money and put it into tools and having a go at making stuff. At least he's got the tools. He's got the stuff. It hasn't been gambled away. And like he was saying, he's he's got um, oh, what did he say? He had uh, a, a Huron um, milling machine, big bloody thing. And he said um, that it lasts longer than he'll, you know, probably live long. That, that thing is so big, it probably lasts longer than him and his kids. So he's like, you know, that's better than just pissing it away on Skybet. So there is that. So yeah. Oh, but also he said that it makes your bike distinctive. It does, it does. Everyone knows that that was hammer dog shit. Chat. Let's get these corrected. Make them look like they were actually made for the wheel. Let's get stuck in. Welcome back. Oh, I'm glad you're doing it accurately. What did he say? You can get a, a square and. Oh no. Nah, he's just fucking guessing. Oh, good. For a minute there, I was, thought I was going to look like a clown and he'd actually do the job properly, and then it, I'm basically just commenting on videos that are correct. <laughs> Like, someone did say, and it's nothing against the guy, I talk to the guy regularly, but he did say, Matt, Matt maybe you should also do, because he, he loves do, watching these, but he says, maybe you should also do more videos on, like, commenting and watching Craig stuff. It's like, no, 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 no. There is no point commenting and watching Craig stuff. Go and watch Craig stuff. That's what you do. You don't need me to fucking... He says and shows you what's what. Um, the whole point with these is that people who don't know don't know and for years now people have said no it's not that bad it's not that bad it's not that bad i don't know what you're talking about you know so he made a little fuck up here or he made a little fuck up there no 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 no. this is littered with i say a now i'm saying b because if you said a you're a knob and then a week later no you obviously do a you know what i mean because if you said b you'd be a knob and it's just like Dude, you are contradicting yourself so much. You know, I get loads of comments of people saying, I saw this years ago. Or I've there's one guy <laughs> who's watching these ahead of time and then he's trying to find the, the, the fuck-ups or whatever. And there's loads. There's loads I breeze past as well because there's repeats. But he then looks, watches me do this and goes... Oh, fuck, I didn't notice that, this, that, and the other. You know what I mean? And other people in the comments notice other stuff that I miss. Because, you know, no one's perfect. And, well, some people are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Perfectly rippled and beefy. Are we... See, I haven't doubled the speed up. I haven't even doubled the speed up. Look, this is, this is him doubling the speed up. So, let's go. He's going to go through discs like they're going out of fashion. Come on. There we go. Uh, yeah, so they look like guesses to me, though. Did you just guess? To make sure that the line on that side and that side are straight, just go all the way. <laughs> just go all the way, and then when they meet up and it goes ping, you go, yes! <laughs> How far do you go up, though? Oh, is that it? Is that it? Little, little bit. A little bit. You have to take bigger triangles out than that, though. He's like, uh, uh. it's two circles, an inner and an outer. Right? You can do. You can cut it without even touching it. You measure the. You got do it on card. One circle. Your actual radius. How much smaller is that radius than the one I've got? How much smaller in length? So you measure the cord, and you say how much smaller is that? And it goes. It's X amount. It's I don't know, 18 millimetres. So you go, right, if I get my slitting disc and take out 2 millimetres per slit, that's just 6. 6 and 18. 
They're not the same number, I know that much. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, here we go, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. What the fuck are you doing? Uh, we're just going for it. That's it. That's it. Perfect. It's not that... <laughs> We've got away with that, honestly, because you won't believe me. Uh... Right, still not quite perfect, but it's good enough. For... Right, so it's not that perfect. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ooh, who put that all in there? Look at that. That's fucking well off. Uh, <laughs> that's terrible. Uh, that's from that's factory. That. Uh, what was I gonna say? Oh yes, actually, what goes on there is that the fairing? That is terrible. No, it. What is that for? Because isn't that for the fairing? What's this for? I don't know. Maybe someone's drilled a hole in there badly. But regardless, whatever. Uh, the guy with the ZX7, what is that bit? What is that bit for? What's that attached to? Oh, I'll just have a look. Uh, ZX7R. What is that bit at the front? Oh, we, we should actually have a giant... Oh, it is. It's the bottom drop of the fairing uh, the mudguard sorry I'm fucking as bad as him now might as well call it a bloody oh you feck oh it's a wiki one that's alright then so it must be that one is that right uh, just oh hang about there's one there for the fairing for the back of it one there where are we it's just above the... Yeah, yeah, it is, it is that. God, fuck me, that's terrible, isn't it? That's t Especially if it's in a fairing. You, 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 you've got a bit of wiggle room there. Yeah, we'll keep this picture up because that's a good picture as reference. Oh. Oh. Yeah, look at the size of that hole. And it does venture down. I wonder what the hole... I wonder what the, uh, the ratio is. But he says, and I quote... I don't know. Still not quite perfect, but it's good enough. So still not that perfect, right? So perfect is, you think about a percentage, right? Perfect is 100. 99.9 .9 is almost perfect, but it's not perfect. It's one, it's just one thing. It, that's it. It's almost, what does he say? Right, still not quite perfect, but it's good. It's still not that perfect. No, there's not that perfect. It's not a region. It's a point. It's either perfect or it's not. You're fucking miles away. <laughs> Look at it. If he's trying to match this curve, which he's not, he should be lifting this up. And like I say, a lot of people... Oh, like I say, I didn't say anything. A lot of people get... He does it at some point. But you get tubing or something like that. You can tape it to the tyre and put the put the mud guard on top of the tyre so it gives you that space. Of You know, and we're talking like rubber hosing. You know, garden hose, airline, whatever. Good enough for what I've got in mind. It's gone from about half an inch run out at the end to about five mil. But you, you measure it against the tire. So, seven, eight mil difference. Well, it's, I want to hear his math. End to about five mil. Oh, sorry, go back again. It's gone from about half an inch run out at the end. Half an inch. So what's half an inch? It's like twenty. So is it 25.4 is an inch? So half of that is like 12 and a half ish. 12.6. To about 5 mil. So 5 mil off that. So. We'll, how much? 7, 8 mil difference. 8 mil plus 5. That's pretty yeah, cool. Give him that. We'll give him that. And once a world of those slits up, that's going to drag in a little bit more yet. Why would you do that? So let's tack the other. Are they in line? I can't even tell. It doesn't look like it is because I'd make sure all these space. You thought do this, but if you were going to do this, you'd make sure at least that all these spaces are the same. But this space here looks a lot smaller than that one. Where these two, because you might go, well, this is closer, Matt, to the camera and that's further away. Well, yeah, surely these would be smaller then. <laughs> but if you, if you didn't work that one out, this and this look very similar to this and this. So they look very good. 
or close to each other, but that looks like a different... So I don't think these are in line at all. One. And if we ever get hold of the bike, we can literally measure them because you'll be able to see them on the inside. You'll be able to see his dog shit, will, his dog shit welds are. And if you can't, bit of acid, that'll bring so it up. Make them the same. Especially in stainless. Squeeze it. Why is he putting it? Why is he, why is he putting another tack on it in the same place? Who knows? Warp factor two. Yeah, it's actually touching front and rear, so that's perfect. It's actually touching front and rear, so that's perfect. Well, it's not because when you go up, it's going to be a smaller cut, uh, a smaller radius. Oh, he's, he's talking. I thought I was going to get one word, but no, he's yabbering on. So let's have him yabber. Touching front and rear, so that's perfect. Actually, got that one bang on. Well, I can see you can see it's a runaway cord, right? But the runaway radius that's closer here and further away here. I'm looking there and there, but it's touching there and there. So this is this is this this is not this is really wrong. <laughs> that's not even a circle anymore. That's I'm it. thinking this one may be the front. I don't know because I kind of think that round edge matches under there and so on. But the fact that that's Chucky. perfect on that ellipse. No, he really put his them black rubber pieces of shite over his shocks. Absolutely. You can chuck it perfect. Your and the other one, the pointy one. Absolutely perfect. Are you watching, Craig? Per that's perfect. You're one doing it wrong. Kind of runs away just a little bit. That's how it would do at the back, right down below, just to catch the rain and stuff. So maybe that's a happy accident. Oh, I love happy accidents. They keep on happening. Right. Do they? Using the vibe. I see a lot of that's accidents. I'm going to squash them. You look happy back in it. just a little bit because they flared out just slightly, which is quite natural when you're pushing anything in. I didn't want to bring these slits up any higher than I had to because there's more to weld up. This way I can just squash them back in, oh. and now all I've got to do is now it's got facets though. Tack weld those back up. Unless that's what you're looking for. And then make them look good. Ah, look, he's got wood under his vice to stop it moving. <laughs> Isn't it dull on him? That's all. Oh, no, obviously. Let's go. What? What? Oh, yes. I know, it's... Oh, it's we'll have to... This is really annoying. There you go, on the inside, a little row of tacks, and just seam it nicely together. That's bird shit though. You've missed the... You've missed inside. it. That'll... that'll finish back. So you haven't... you haven't... ones like this, you haven't levelled them out with a straight edge or anything. Put a tack in, if it's not right, bend it. Tap, 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 tap. Tappy tap tap. I'm not even looking at the bloody camera. Tappy tap tap. Oh. And now we're doing it on the outside. So fuck what it says. So he's teaching people again, but he said it's just for his enjoyment. That fucking machine gun. Wow. Oh, even he speeded it up. I know this could be TIG welded, but don't have a TIG machine. Again? He's writing this again? You do. The stacking of short tacks prevents overheating and distortion. Not, not if you keep on just doing them one after another, it doesn't. Oh, both sides. Right, you don't weld like this for structural <laughs> It's just funny. Just the amount of weld that goes on. It's like, wow. There's another six kilos. Let's get that bald spot out.
Del's got the kind of hair that's like spray on her. I'm jealous. I love spray on her. I wish I had spray on her. Oh no, we're going straight into... What the fuck are they gloves? Gloves, just so you don't hurt your little pretty hand. But, putting it in the vice is fine. Get that bitch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Left is. Wait. God, what did you put on there? It was tiny. Oh, look. It's one complete mud guard again. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell the way he sets up because he's talking bollocks. Because he, he has to make sure he gets himself into the shot. I am to not give a toss. I'll let you know unless I'm on a whiteboard talking to people. Or like I'm doing this where... I could just do a voiceover and get rid of the muggins, but people like the muggins, and I think it's just because I like to see how fucking shocked I look. <laughs> oh, well, I think the decision as to which half of this goes which end has made itself, really. It just looks oh, right know. like that. That's the front half. It's God, the square one, the original one I made, because it fits in with this. Everything fits, and it all looks correct. You said it... Uh, I love how he says it all the time. It all looks correct. And also, the pointy end at the back gives a kind of tail to the back of my guard. I kind of like that. Works quite well, right down here. And as you can see now... Is that the pointy end? I thought this was now, the pointy end. Putting the two halves together, the seam, the joint between them is just happy accident. It's just come out almost perfect. A little tiny grind on one side, just a little piece of material out of the way, and that would be almost an airtight joint. I can just seam weld that right. Airtight? Fuck me, I'm glad you don't work for NASA. They'd all be dead. ISS would just fucking vent it. Way across, a little bit of strength on the inside, a couple of bits of sheet plug welded, just to keep that absolutely strong. And then that's one mudguard. I love it. Kind of Arlen Ness style -y. I like that. All the way down to the ground at the back. Absolutely love it. And down at the front here too. I want to keep this look down the front. I like that. Kind of picks up the front of the mudguard. Must, you know... You can do that with any... I can go, look, my drinks thingy. It just, if I do this, it just lines up with the front. Or if I turn it that way, it just lines up with the lines up your bench look. <laughs> you can just do this with anything. Fuck it, my head look. <laughs> if I turn it that way, okay. High booster, blackbird, that sort of thing. Definitely like the depth at the front, and then you might as well emulate that at the rear as well. Take it right the way down. Then that looks proportionally rotated. Now I'm telling you right now, if you had a mudguard and it was two thirds the size of that or half the size of that and that's all he had when he went to the local car boot or whatever what have you he'd be like oh this is just perfect this is just perfect again it's just it keeps on being perfect how does this happen it's just another perfect happy accident it doesn't matter what goes on this bike it's perfect it's just but um we, <laughs> i hadn't noticed <laughs> all this time while he's talking about mud guards like, there's a bum all <laughs> The bikes, the bikes, like fifth bum all, it's got loads. <laughs> to the right angle, I'm just looking in the picture beside the screen. So I think that now works. All I'm going to need after this is some bracketry to hold it together. I'm thinking three mil. The stuff that I made the top of the benches from, I've still got loads of that, three millimetre thick. That stuff's going to be awesome for this. I'm thinking of making a plate. Cut it out of cardboard. Boo. A plate that's going to bolt to there, front and rear, possibly not even use these ones. Bolt to there come on the inside and then literally, I'm thinking, seam weld it along this edge. So it actually comes up and it's one piece and the mudguard can then be blended in. Remember when he showed us on his thing that you want to do lap joints, that butt welds are not strong. And that will then pick it up with a lot of the other bodywork. So the mudguard will come around and it will blend into its bracket. Thinking that sort of thing, perhaps some holes bored in it, big ones for looks and take some of the weight out of it. Uh, as for weight, just another one, lots of you are saying, all this metal body work, how much is this bike going to weigh? Took 25 kilos off this bike when I first stripped it down. That's all the fairing, the fairing frame underneath, all the tail end plastics, the original exhaust system, everything. 25. The seat, the pillion seat, the expansion tank that you still need, that you think you don't. Uh, but that still doesn't answer the question. 55 pounds in weight gone, that's quite a lot. And at the moment, with what I've put... And I also didn't see him wear that. I am a bit suspicious. I didn't see him wear that. 
Well, on in its place uh, is the tail, and that's about five and a half kilos now. This thing's about one and a half kilos, whatever this way side. It's the belly pan. I still don't think I'm over 25, and if I am, I don't care. It doesn't really matter, but I certainly don't be that much over, that's for sure. But you said right at the beginning of this series that the whole point was to try and make this bike lighter. This is your Well, work. with this, like I said, just one more thing. Seam weld that across and then get into the plates. Then that's done. I love, got the curvature right now. That was really, really important with such a long mud guard. It's got to fit the wheel, although it looks a bit daft. And then that's it. One more thing, just quietly, just one more thing. These. A lot of people have been saying that these need to go now. This, as you refer to it, pipe lagging. It's not pipe lagging, it's radiator hose. It's a big, thick, solid rubber radiator. I don't think they, they really care. I think they're just having a laugh because it looks stupid. It hose slid over. It's not pipe like in your mongs, it's radiator hose, clearly. I did it to emulate the big custom bike alloy tubes that you see, you know, but I can't. I don't, I don't, no one has sent me a picture. I did ask, but no one sent me a picture of, I've never seen what he's talking about. That people put tubes of anything over the shop. I can't afford those. I could probably. Doesn't doesn't mean they don't exist. I just I have asked and no one sent me a map. Make some, seen. but this was so easy, so cheap. Did them right back at the beginning of the project, and they've been on there ever since. But with a lino knife, I can slice them off, chuck them away. It's not the end of the world. Don't worry too much about that. I might remove them. I might not. Not sure. I think when all this is done, they're going to look a bit clumsy, like so many of you say. So I think they will have to go. Certainly not on the handlebars, though. I love the fact that I put some on the handlebars to make them look inch and a half without having to then put new controls and new clamps and everything else. It's just a cheap option at the time. But people don't do that though. They have the fat in the middle. I don't know why, but the fat in the middle and then go back down to the normal size. I don't know why. Why would you give a shit? But people seem to seem to give a shit because because they don't ride the things really. They just got the local calf and they go there slowly. But there we go, this bike's evolving as it goes. I'll be re Caravan followers is what my old man used to be doing call. some of the stuff that I <laughs> They get behind the caravan and just fucking stay there because it, it keeps the, the aggressive wind off us. <laughs> I've done possibly even revisiting the stuff on the top of the tank. Not sure if it looks a bit clumsy in the light of all the rest of it. So again, maybe modify. I love it, the light of all the rest of it. You've got a kidney bean on the front. You've got whatever that fucking shit is on the bottom. You've got a tail that looks like a penis. A whale's vagina, no, not vagina, penis. And then you've got Art Nouveau post pump pat bop slots. I don't fucking know on this, whatever this is going to be. Find that this project will be done when it's done. <laughs> Who knows? But there we are. It's got to be right before I roll it out in the sunshine and call it finished and sign it off. I've got to be happy with every single aspect of it. And there's still little things that annoy me. So there we go. I'm going to call it done for now. That's another one in the wall. Take easy, ride safe. See you next time. Oh, that makes sense. And we're going to watch another one. I've noticed. Don't press the button because it goes back. Press space bar. <laughs> Naked forks now and one piece fender. Oh my god. Oh, look, quick, before we go anywhere, let's have a quick look. This is 10,000 views. It's gone back up a bit. Um. He's got all these sponsorships. Cool. Kill. Kill, kill, kill. Go, Johnny, go, 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 go. Oh, no, we're going to have to watch all this shite because that's funny. That fit like a glove. If you do, do not scratch your horn. Did he? Well, that looks like a nick. Or a Stephen, not sure. We... That up, oh, no, go back, you fuck. That looks like a nick there. That could be one. Why is it? Oh, he greased it. Yeah, that's a nick because he was down. 
stop I know it's his technique change where he's he's trying to peel it away so you you've got your radius like that and it's there and he's trying to peel it away and cut which he cut across it not cut at it so he, he did mark him because he's changed the way he's done it No, now he's just gone straight back to stab and I. Why would that, why would, why would that all of a sudden, why would you have to check the clearance? Yeah. <laughs> So, you might have missed it in the last one, but he basically mentioned briefly that the tank, the shit on the tank, the tobacco tin might not be... What the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this? That's an induction coil. You stick metal in there and it heats up. <laughs> fuck's sake. What is this? Oh my god, that's awesome. Any road, back to taking, talking about the uh, the tank, yeah. You might have noticed that he said, eh, you know, that shit on the tank might be shit, so we might maybe remove that because it doesn't blend in with the rest of the shit. I did mention it, but it's his first mention of removing something. So, right back at the beginning, he put some tubes, some rubber tubing on the forks. He's now removed that. Now, the next thing he did, he did the kidney bean on the front, which basically just cut, he just cut a tank, cut a hole in it, did that all badly. And then he moved on to the tank and just slopped this big shit on. I had a big argument with everyone about charging things with USB and how much of a retard he is, and he, but he thinks everyone else is wrong and they're retards. Uh, basically just insulted half of his audience and then told them to think about it and stop being retards, which I think is hilarious. And now he's kind of backtracking on that idea. I wonder if anything else is going to change. Foreshadowing. <laughs> I love watching people plug stuff in. Have you noticed this is where this comes from? This is where this comes from. This has now started. This has really now started. This is probably the first episode where this has become full on. We've never watched him put a ground on. Look, we've seen this a couple of times, but not to this extent. Okay, hi there. Right, today's little task is to join these two halves together. And they were made, they were both fabricated independently of each other. In other words, they were one And piece. at completely separate times, so... No, they were The chances of... You aren't fabricated in these pods. That joint being absolutely perfect are practically nil. And one of the things I'd like to do in the future, as I've said many times, is I would like to elevate myself as in a skill set into TIG welding. And I will be doing that. I have a friend who lives very nearby Stop. who has promised over and over again to teach me TIG welding. And I will take you up on that, my friend, because I do want to learn TIG. But I've got to get the right machine and I have to save up for that and that will come. This, um, The little thing I've got is no use. I've got to have a proper machine for that and I will get one. And then I... No, you can do it with the what is it? Having high frequencies that really helps, but you don't need it. Uh, you don't need it. It really helps. Let, let me not say how good high frequency start is, but you don't. He's got a machine. Shall you go and learn off him? You don't need your own machine, or unless he's he's going to come. He, but he did say the guy's got a TIG and he's going to show you. Hmm, I think he's waiting for someone to send him one. I think that's what he's doing. You can move away from doing things like that, which work perfectly fine and will serve the, the job, but I'll be able to make a lovely TIG weld instead. Welds that perhaps in the future I can leave exposed and just paint, and that would be fantastic because I want to get into frame building in the future and exhaust building. Because if I can make exhaust systems out of bends and curves, then... You had to go out making a, a fucking around with that... A, a, Chopping bits and sticking bits back on an exhaust. It was fucking terrible. I'm not talking this. I'm talking about the Triumph. This was terrible as well. That's awesome. The sky's the limit. And I, there's so many things I want to do, but it's the skills to do it. And that's what I'm in the process of trying to develop. And that's what the purpose of this bike build is. What this bike ends up looking like is less important than what I learned from it. And I've already learned so much. And one uh, So basically, I know it looks like shit, 
I'm now back. Those things again. is what I'm about to do today, and that's getting the joint right. If you're going to do TIG welding, one of the issues with all of it. Is... Oh, so I know fuck all about TIG welding. I'm now going to tell you about TIG welding. <laughs> is that the joint between two pieces of metal needs to be practically perfect, almost air what tight? Because what no, it doesn't. A lot of the time, when you put weld, you leave a gap. TIG welding. It's less about filling the joint with metal and more about. Now, for sheet metal, you pretty much want it butted together spot on because then you get the welding. Where it's MIG welding, actually, you do want a, it's not bad if you have a tiny little gap because then you, you guarantee penetration because you don't really have that much control because the wire just feeds regardless. And yes, you can fuck around with the speed control. With a TIG, you, that's the whole point is it's separate. You've got melting ability and then you've got adding material ability and you can sit there oh no that's not melting well enough or that's not bridged across i can sit there and fuck around then go then go right you have control of them both independently and basically you're taking one of the roles that the mig does you're taking control of this is why it takes a bit more skill now that's it melting the two halves of the joint into i don't know why i said now <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Del. Sorry, Del. I am interrupting the man. It's less about filling the joint with metal and more about melting the two halves of the joint into each other. Well, that, that's the same thing. That, I'm sorry, that is the same thing. Fusing the two bits together is what you what Needs you to be to practically perfect, almost airtight, because the TIG welding... That's what I was going to say. So... When you do MIG welding, especially with thicker material, you always have a, a chamfer and all this shit, but you always leave a gap so you make sure, almost like the metal falls to the bottom, and you'll have to put a backer in if you're going to do that, um, but you make sure it falls right in there because, like I said, it's just feeding it regardless, right? Where with TIG, you have a bit more control. So with TIG, you can do what you want, right? You can just sit there. And... With TIG... There's a lot, if you get your, especially when you're doing pipe and stuff like that, for like or tubing for exhaust pipe, when you stick them together, you can literally butt them together and you can literally just fuse them together without any filler whatsoever if your fucking edges are clean enough. Now, some people shy away from that, but weirdly enough, um, orbital TIG welding. I wonder if we have any orbital TIG welding. Uh, usually used on like smaller um, pipes. I don't know, we'll have a see. So basically, an orbital TIG welder is it's a ring. You stick your two bits of pipes in together. It's got a clamp that holds each side. And what it does is it it just has a TIG tip, right, a tungsten tip like this, and it just basically just rolls it around. Right? Well, it usually only does it once. Uh, and what it does is it has a start up, and it'll go right 360, and it'll go a bit past, and it'll trail off. So you get so you see the little little stack of dime type things go do 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 and just fade off and disappear. Um, orbital TIG welding, and it's they're all it's um, yeah, this here we go. This I've used um, tiny ones like these little tiny ones for doing little tubing, so doing like I don't know, five, ten mil tubing, a lot of swage lock type stuff. So, I can find a good video. Lincoln Electrics. So this is how a lot of exhaust pipes are welded together. The Apex 2100 paired with the Helix T55 oh, tractor. That's a MIG. Is right. truly the height of orbit. It's doing big pipes. Now, when they do pipes across the country, they have a little bug that does it. It goes around, you put straps on, and it's like a track, and it just goes round it like that. So that's this. It'll take exactly technology. Lincoln Electric's new system delivers the quality you've come to expect from Lincoln, plus new technology that gives you the edge. Oh, it is a TIG machine. So it's just got wire plus feed. Plus new technology that gives you the edge required to succeed in Look demanding that. markets. The Apex 2100's model with Lincoln Electric's 100 volts. It's, it's a TIG, but like me, it's got the wire Helix feed. T55. There we go. There's the track. Right, that's the track it goes on. So you clamp this on. When they do pipelines like across America or something, they, that's how they weld all these Reliable pipes in any environment. The patent-pending ring technology sets the Helix T55 tractor apart from all other orbital TIG systems. Its unique design allows for more consistent travel performance. Better mounting capabilities and industrial strength materials make for a smooth track progression and prevent the system from lunging forward at transition points. 
And it's just got wire feed, look, and then the, the tungsten. But yeah, so that's that. The ones I've used are these small ones. But they don't use any filler at all. These things, these things. So they've got all these, like, it's like, it's, just, it's not, it's not, oh, it's what you make your, um, oh, it's like Tufnel inspection ports. It's got here, you see. Look, you see, that's just the, t the tungsten tip here. Now, this has all got to be electrified. This is why you have all these um, insulators. So you put in your two bits of wire, your two bits of tubing like that, it just goes around well. And you get a spot on weld and a lot of little pipes and stuff, a lot of brake lines, well not brake lines. Uh, no, some of them are. I have seen other th uh, injectors. So some injectors inside, when I mean, you get especially diesel bigger ones and all the rest of it, they, they weld them together like this. Um, oh look, Swage Lock actually build their own. Ah! It's not the one I used. Oh, this is some web seminary thingy. We've got a picture of it. Here we go. Look, yeah, this is it. Um, is that just attached to a drill? Oh, yeah, and you put a bit of tubing on the end, so you do a purge. So you just you just slip a bit of rubber bung on the end of the tubing and you blow arg on through it. There you go. You can see, you can see it's, you can just see it's just trailing off, right? It's just, uh, and you can program all that in. There you go. That's what orbital TIG welding is. If you ever look at something, you go, "How the fuck was that welded?" Like it's this perfect. Oh my god! Did that go wrong? Oh no! Oh cool. I've got a shot that's going to show you. Zzz, there you go. Lock that in. They're doing the purge. Well, that's just to restrict the gas flow coming through. And there you go, it's spot on. I imagine it's how they weld silencers together and stuff like that when they do mass manufacturing of them. It's less about filling the joint with metal and more about melting the two halves of the joint into each other. But that's the whole point, is when you don't have enough to fuse the both ends, if they're too far apart and you haven't got enough in there that's how you, you you add filler in your dick it's 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 all important not one is more important than the so other so if you're going to melt them into each other they need to touch all the way along so that's the point tick welding takes so much longer as an overall process because getting the joint right getting the notch in that joint the two pieces of metal to be absolutely perfect all the way around is the task and the you don't prep anything for welds. I've never seen him prep anything for welds. The time-consuming part. And there are ways to do it quicker to make it a little bit easier. And that's what I wanted to show you very quickly. I learned this from a TIG weld guy. So it's a really easy way to do it, especially with exhaust pipes or curves on frames, that sort of thing. And that is this. If I want to get that joint, so the two halves not only meet the correct curvature, so they don't end up like that or like that, even a fraction will show once it's welded. So they've got to be absolutely a smooth curve so that when it's all ground back, it's completely flawless and you can't see where they're joined. That's what I'm looking to aim. Put one over the top of the other and then cut them. I think he's going to go for that. So in order to do that, you can spend ages with one of these, Dude. touching the joint here and there, keep offering it up until they're the same, but you're never going to get them exactly the same. This is what I learned and it's so easy. All you do, you take one, put it over the other. So do it this way. Stretch one of them over the top of the other like that, as close as you can. Then use this one as a rule and draw yeah, on this, but using that up against. So you literally trace the track of this. Yeah, but the problem is, is you can't cut to your lines. We've seen you do it. You can't grind to your lines. This part onto this part, making a template take that off and you've got a line a line to cut this is so art attack neil buchanan now i don't want to lose any overall length on this or none to speak of but i'm going to only probably do a centimeter at the most sort of you know 10 mil half inch that's all i'll lose and it's not a bad thing either because that edge is perfect ish and that edge again with this perfect it's got a little notch in it where the weld blew through and i ground it back so that can that's sacrificial so i'll come 10 mil up there draw a line and that will put it in. 
But before I do that, I've got oh, you could have just not cut it. I make sure that the line I draw is in the right place. So to do that, I've got to put it on the wheel, and I've got a space. Hello. Right. All right. All right. Cool. I'll just be a minute. That's it. Big delivery. Ooh. Above the wheel, so that as I draw around it, it follows the exact line it's going to follow. Then, you don't have to then when it's more. cut, it should mate up absolutely perfectly, in theory. I'll show you how we space it on the tire exactly right. Obviously, you need to make sure that the gap. All so it's gone straight back into. I'm just doing this so I can learn things and you can watch. I know nothing about TIG welding. I don't know how to weld. I'm completely useless. And now he's gone straight back into Delmar. All the way round is the same and a minimum of, in this case, 12 mil. Now I like at least 12 mil. Ah, oh, tubing's Off quite. inch between the tyre and the mudguard, especially a steel mud. You don't want to put one, you want to put two because it's a curve. So you put two. You can use the tread and space it out. It doesn't have to be spot on, but you know, you just, I don't know, an inch either side. And then you put it on top of that. Not one. Not one. Because obviously, what you have to consider is stones getting underneath there. So if that because on one, it'll just rock. That my God is too close to the tire. Then if a stone gets up underneath, it's going to jam against. No, it's not going to jam. Your tire will grab it and go <laughs> and either fire it straight into the bottom of your bike because it'll go back over it and fire it up, or it's just going to fire it out a, pedest a pedestrian. That pedestrian that you're about to cut in half for your really sharp mudguard. The mudguard or fender, and it's going to then roll and gore lumps out of the rubber, which is pretty nasty. It's going the wrong way, Del. It's going the wrong way. The tire goes that way, Dick. Nasty and could even cause a puncher. So, if you're going to put it. So, you're either going to go over a stone, fire it at the bike, or fire it up, or fire it up, or if he does get under the mudguard, somehow, it's going to fire it forward. On the tire, like that, and measure where you want it to be. Oh, look, it's rocking. Being cut, then. There's a tip for you, little piece of rubber tubing, little fuel hose I've used, tape it along and that ensures That's not a little fuel hose, that's huge! An even gap all the way around, make sure that the donor part is equally spaced. If it's a wider mudguard on a wider wheel, then use two pieces, no, you side either. by side and run them round, and then you'll get an exact gap all the way around, and it will also keep the mudguard centred as well in, in terms of the no, it won't keep it centered, it'll just stop it tipping. The lateral ellipse, if you want the posh word. So that's a little tip for you. Make sure. Oh, look, look, it literally falls sure. off. You always space it. If you don't, it's going to end up too close in one place, not far enough away in another, so on, and you end up with problems later on. Once you've welded it, then you've got all the other stuff. I reckon someone told him this in the last comment. In the remedy, last so there we are. And they deleted it. So he's even readjusted it. His tube was longer than this. Mm. See, it can roll. Best thing to mark with. Really fat. Mark Here we are. With. Exact template. Let's cut it off. Just go for it. Put it in there. Pop it. Also, though another way you could do it is if you mark the centre of everything, try and mark the centre of everything, everything, and then you get a bit of paper and you draw a line, you fold it in half so you've got a nice, nice line and you get to your line, your edge, and you put it on it and you make sure that line goes to the crease in your paper and comes out the back there, pull it around it, tape it, whatever, and then draw around the edge of the paper, go on to the other one, do the same thing, and then they should be not all only match but they should be straight and then you can get the two centers and what you do is you put them together you, you line that you put down both or you should have done a line when it was one thing before you cut in two or maybe you shouldn't have cut it in two anyway but regardless once you've got your line in the middle you match your line up on your mudguard and then you tack it there tack it right there and you know that it's lined up so it can twist but it's all right because you've tacked in the middle here we go because he's bent it out of shape. Not the the joint is. One follows the other exactly. Is it? Ready to weld. Well, it doesn't because it looks like to me that that's higher. But he is holding it midair, so. Hang on, is it? 
Oh, it ain't hard. Oh, oh, oh. Perfect. Oh, fucking hell. On your tyre, on your, next to your disc, next to your everything. Fuck it. But at least you've wrapped a rag around this oil seal, because that's the only thing that matters. Fucking hell. <laughs> you get a spatter that nicely sticks, proper sticks to your disc. It's just going to go around and go, ah! and take a nice, it's probably going to take a big score out of your brake pad before it chips off. That's if it chips off. If it doesn't, it's just going to fucking eat a score in your brake pad. Wow. Tap the middle? Nah, don't tap the middle. Now, the problem is now, is that now that he's done that, and this is the thing, right? He's cut a section out of the middle, right? Because he made these longer or whatever. And now he's twisted them and the, the board out at that end, so they've gone, they've gone flatter out. And now he's trying to put them together. And now he's cut a section out. Because he has cut a section out of the middle. Now he's put them together. He's now tacked either side. So if it's warped and bubbled, it's not matching up in the middle. As he squeezes it in, you're going to get a fold. Oh, yeah. Tack that bit. Look, you can see it from here. Ah, oh, that's it. Dude, he's welding on a tyre. Stop it. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, no. no hammer work, no dolly work, no nothing to match them up. Just go for it. Oh, yeah. No, he just goes for it, doesn't he? As long as you're keeping the heat out of it, though. Oh, what? Cut in the middle. Oh, is it because it's folding up? Oh. Right, so oh. this is where we are now. Um, we're at the sides first, and then I've got that curvature absolutely correct and strong. Um, good little stack of tack welds on the inside to get it just nice and beef. You, 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 you've done this all then around. Then that left a bit more of a loop on this back half than that half. This is Why? It's a bit Why? flatter across the top than that is, but that's easy to remedy. All you got to do, as that comes up at the back, as this loops upwards. But this isn't in line. This isn't level. This isn't level. Look at the lead. This lead look, it's a fucking ledge. You can't just hammer that down in because what will happen is you'll end up with this will come along, then there'll be a step in it, and it will look ugly, and when you try and grind that off, you'll go through, because it's only sheet metal. So all you do is cut a little slit in it, like that, and that slit then comes together, allowing that to rest down. So all but then it, it, it lifts up here, because it's not like it, it's not meeting up there. It doesn't match there. All I do, I've done that side, as you can see. Take your little toffee hammer. And you just tap, tap that side down in, so that then meets it. And this one, as you can see, then you just tap that down in. So as the two, as this one at the back was more like this, that's exaggerating it. All I've done is cut a slit there, and then when you hammer them down, the slit comes together, and you just weld it up. So it's just making it up as you go along. And it's no different if you're making fuel tanks, which is what I would like to get to do in the future once I can TIG them. But this is about getting the metal shaped correctly so there's the least amount of grinding later on and the most amount of strength. Spatter spray. Oh, dude, you're way too late. Oh, he has some. It's way too late for that. Oh, my good God. Oh, my good God. Oh, my good God. Oh, that 
DIY house brush for taking paint off door frames and who's gonna do it? I tell you what, this weld could do some more heat in it. It's no fuck given. Oh, we are a full volume. Just no fucks given at all. Oh, oh Adele's playing in. Let's have a look then, Adele. He does remember what it looked like before he touched it, doesn't he? Oh, that, that, that's a weird really good. Right, here we go. Okay. Um, now I've learned, if you're going to do fabrication, you'll learn very quickly, because I've learned. Oh, you've learned. Pattern. To bite off more than you can chew. I came in here this morning, intending to quickly weld that across, remove the rubber tubing, and then start looking into the side mounts I'm going to do to put this onto the bike. But there we are, four hours later, all I've done is weld that joint across. But that turned out to be quite a challenge. It needed a three-way cut to get it to fit because they were different elliptical shapes as well as... No, different profiles because you've been fucking around with them. There were one, one, once there were one, I believe. Getting the actual line right, so there's lots to it. But fabrication is enormous good fun. It's a great way to express yourself, and I absolutely love it. It's my single favourite pastime. I think I said that before, once or twice. So there we are. That's it. I've now at least got it in one. My God, where the right and and now I've got the option. I can mount it practically anywhere. I kind of thinking it does need a little bit of elevation at the back. Then one of you guys pointed out bumping off a curb, it would just touch on it, and that would do quite a bit of damage. So. I'm just going to lift it a little bit, which gives me a bit more at the front, which is nice. It's what I wanted. Uh, it's straight. It hasn't twisted in any way, which is important. So there's no Absolutely. distortion to it, and it follows the line still. It's a little bit higher than it was when I first put it on, but it, it cannot be any lower than this. As I said, it has to have that 12 mil half inch gap. Otherwise, stones can get caught up under there, and so on and so forth. So there we are. So these, as I said to you, I think the last one, I'm going to leave them naked now. I like the forks as they are. I did originally intend for this to be just matte black and a bit of a rat bike, but Street Fighter, you know, the sort of thing. But that's where the rubber. That's why I called it a Street Fighter right from the very beginning. You didn't say rat bike. The tubes came from. Chucked them out now. Uh, but slicing them off, I like to see the forks there. They still look beefy enough on the bike. I still think they work. They work. Oh no, I love the tubes because they made it look as more. Work for me. So they'll stay like that now. They do. Look at this, you can see, you follow the radius round and there's this bulge that doesn't belong and then this disappears off. You need to be refurbished a little, there's a few chips and scratches which is... Well you stuck with the fuck, I just saw you do it. One of the other reasons I didn't bother covering them up, there we Let's see if you... Yeah. So the pipe lagging, as you call it, is gone, I'm not going to use that anymore. It gives me more space here for the mic guards, which is great. I may have to just notch these out a little bit, what I may do where... There's about three mil either side between the mud guard and the fork legs, and I don't think that's enough. I want about five. Why? It should never move if you if it's. Really also, I may notch these very slightly, but I've got to know where that notch is going to be. So that's in the next video when I get involved in mounts, which have got to go onto here and here. I've got mounts at the front. There's lots of options. I might do something with tubes and bars. I might do something with sheet. I don't know. I still can't decide, so I'm not going to get involved. Like I said. You always end up biting off more than you can chew. I plan to do loads more, and all I've done is one weld. But that took four hours. That's just the way it goes. Don't rush it. Any Nora, and put about four on it. Should be broken down into loads of mini projects, and look at Ugh. each job in its entirety as a specific set project, all on its own. And you'll always make a better job of it. That's what I think. Anyway, it's that works for me. So there we are. That's it. Join us tomorrow for the prize job. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. All right, safe. See you next time. Hold on, Perfect. Four, 410 and a half hours. Why would you put the half in? It's almost desperate. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.